All right, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. If you've never been here before, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you are notified. Click that notification bell next to the subscribe button, and then you will get your notification every time a new video is uploaded to SoFlow TV. So this headline in this uh, article is taken from the JamaicaObserver.com, and the headline is "Sadness, Shock at Ava Thelwell's Passing." I gave you my source so you can go and look up this uh, article and read it for yourself and also see her picture there so I woke up the other morning and as soon as I picked my phone up I went to Instagram and there it was on Instagram uh, Suzuki Vatara black Jeep I believe it was was being pulled from the water off the Rio Cabre with a female seemed to be strapped in the driver's seat she looked motionless I did not cover that video before because I was looking for more information to come out. And of course, here is the more information. So her name is Ava Thalwell and she is 49 years old. And this seems to have been a suicide. Friends of Ava Thalwell, a 49 year old woman who was suspected of committing suicide by driving her motor vehicle into the Rio Cabre in St. Catherine last week, have expressed sadness at her passing. All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about mental health and mental wellness as I am reading the story. Now, listen, this has affected my life personally on a personal level. So I am going to be speaking from a place of first person. All right, I hope this is, I hope we're able to help somebody with this. The story goes like this. At the same time, people who did not know her took to social media, theorizing that her charming appearance perhaps masked the inner battles that she fought. A friend of Thelwell who requested to be left anonymous told the Jamaica Observer yesterday that she had known her since childhood as they both attended Saxthorpe Methodist Church together. She said that she is still shocked. She can't believe this. Knowing her, I never saw this one coming. She was a beautiful person inside and out and is always smiling with this ironic in the way, it's kind of ironic in the way how her life ended, she said. Police reported that Thelwell, the mother of two adult children and who lived in Kingston, was seen lingering near Flatbridge from about 10 a.m. The cops now said that about 2 p.m., she allegedly, according to eyewitnesses, drove her vehicle to the middle of the bridge, stopped, and then ran her Suzuki Grand Vitara into the river. She was pulled from the water by divers and taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. And that is the video that I saw of them pulling her from the water. Another of Thelwell's friends shared on her Facebook page a picture of them together smiling at an event and she stated in a post that this is how she would want to be remembered, smiling, because that's how she was. I was devastated and I was hurt, you know, that my friend, my dear friend, left us. I heard about the incident of a person driving themselves over the bridge, but I never would have imagined that it was her. Another Facebook user described Thelwell as a beautiful woman based on her pictures on social media. I don't know her, but my deepest condolences to her family. This is so sophisticated and beautiful from the picture that I've seen. I just wish that she called and talked to someone. <laughs> I'm going to talk about all that. Everybody always wishes that you had called and talked to someone. And then when you do call and talk to someone, no one really has time for you. You know, I always tell people, don't greet anyone by saying, hey, how's it going? Don't do that. Hey, hey, how you doing? Don't do that. Because if you ask someone how they're doing, you must have time to listen to them tell you how they are doing. So if you're genuinely going to greet someone, just say hi, or just say, hey, have a good day and keep it moving right but if you ask how are you doing at least be ready to listen and i want you to try this in your personal life just greet people 
and say, hey, how you doing? Or watch when people greet you, what your reaction is when they ask, how are you doing? Anyhow, it's sad. It's sad when you're suffering deep inside and no one can see your pain or what you are going through. My heart aches for her. Instagram user also shared similar sentiments with the champion college pass student or the campion college pass student. One user said that like Thelwell, other people are fighting these silent battles. And that's very true. I lost my brother at 23 years old, the morning of his 23rd birthday. I had to go identify him. And this was pretty much along the same means, ways that it happened. So when I say that I speak from a personal place, this is very real, right? As Caribbean people, we tend to look at mental health, mental wellness in a totally different light. There's nothing medical about it when there should be. There's nothing scientific about it when they should be. There should be. According to our culture, mental health is about you not being strong enough or somebody did something to you. Like spike him spliff, put something in his drink, set obi upon him, that kind of stuff. Or we can pray it away and we can pray about it and it will all go away. That kind of stuff. And that praying stuff works to a certain degree. Okay. So it was one of those situations. We need to check on our loved ones. We need to check on our loved ones as much as possible. And I don't mean to just say, you're good, you're all right. A lot of us don't even stick around to hear when we say, you're all right. What if they said, no, I'm not all right. I'm not all right, you know. I got through some things and God know I can't take it no more. My head, I take me, I don't know, I can't sleep. I haven't slept in a week. I haven't eaten. I actually feel like I want to kill myself. But how many people are trusting enough, you know, to say things like that too? without them resorting to what we've been culturally taught to say. Either they go tell somebody else and then they take it and turn into a joke or a conversation piece. Yes, so flow over there, I'm mad out, you know. Me stop and ask him how he's doing, him all right. Him tell me one bag of problems and about him want to kill himself and all these things. You know, it's the same week out. Yeah, boy, I must say the COVID thing, me don't know him. Week out under the pressure. That's how we talk about mental health, not, not, oh my God, did you just say kill yourself? Um, okay, I'm not leaving your side. I'm not leaving your side. We are going to have to go get some help. Come, let's go get you some help, you know? So culturally, it is embedded in us, Caribbean people, especially I know for a fact, Jamaican people, because I'm a born raised Jamaican. So Jamaican people, it's in us to look the other way on mental illness or to make the person who is suffering from mental illness feel as if it is their fault and they're not being strong enough and that or you're not praying hard enough all that right it is sad man a lot of people are suffering deeply a lot of people so one user said that like Thelwell other people are fighting these same silent battles. We need to check on our loved ones. And I mean, really check on them. Let them feel like they have someone they can talk to because these battles that are being fought silently are deadly. You hear that? These battles that are being fought silently are deadly. It's just like the person who gets up and does murder, suicide, come kill their spouse and then kill themselves. That person was suicidal all along. You heard me. I've seen people flip out and kill their whole family and then kill themselves or kill their whole family and didn't kill themselves. Either way. So these silent battles, they're deep and they're deadly. They're silent and they're deadly. Another user who is a wellness advocate said that Thelwell always reposted her content about mental health and self-care she would watch my instagram live and she would repost my videos about mental health and self-care it is unfortunate that she took the route that she did i think that 
if she just sent me a message or something, we would be talking. Well, super, super sen senior superintendent of police, Stephanie Lindsay, who leads the constabulary corporate communications unit, said yesterday that investigations into the incident are still being carried out. All right, let me close this video up by saying this. You see when she was at the, at the bridge and they said she had been there since like 10 a.m. and she didn't commit that act until 2 p.m. She made her mind up that that's what she was going to do. But then there was a part of her, the sane part of her, the healthy part of her mind said, that's not what you want to do. And it was wrestling with the part of her that had become ill that said, this is what you want to do. Do it. You're better off not being here. Do it. And that pressure becomes so overwhelming that they actually commit to the act and do it. I can't imagine a more, well, I probably can imagine a more gruesome way to die, but that's, that's not no way someone would choose strapped inside of a car sinking in water. That's like some horrible movie scene. So you must, we must first imagine how much pain this person was going through in their personal life, in their turmoil, that they would prefer to die like that than to continue to live. Think about that. When somebody puts a gun to their head or put a gun in their mouth and blow their own brains out, or when somebody puts a rope around their neck and jumps, or when somebody climbs a high rise building to the top floor and dives off onto concrete, or when somebody makes sure that they're strapped in the vehicle and drive off into the river. These are all horrible deaths. And no sane human being wants to feel pain at that level or wants to die that frightened. It's the struggle in the mind. And we are going to have to pull together as a people and start paying more attention to mental health. Not just the madman that we see on the street, not just the madman, but to the people around us that seem like they are okay. Seems like they are up and smiling every day and they're optimistic and they're making everybody else happy in the room and they're known for smiling. Check, check, because that outside smile usually a lot of times, well, not usually, but a lot of times, that bright outer smile is hiding a lot of darkness inside. All right? Leave your comments in the comment section below and let's continue to talk about mental health and our personal experiences and see what we can share and come up with with each other right here on this platform in the comment section below. Click that subscribe button and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you are notified every time a new video goes up so you can stay in touch on SoFlow TV and I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out. Peace.